So this is by far one of the most impressive technological feats we've seen in the recent years. The company Neuralink has achieved a monumental achievement by allowing the first person to regain control of a device using their Neuralink capabilities. Elon Musk and the Neuralink team recently demonstrated telepathy controlling a computer and playing video games just by thinking in this very live stream. This is a monumental feat and is definitely a landmark event that should not be taken lightly. Take a look as they walk you through exactly how this feat was achieved and how the patient is doing. All right, we should be streaming live here. Hello world, how's it going out there? My name is uh, Bliss and I'm an engineer at Neuralink. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the first ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, not many more of those out there. You wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Nolan Arbaugh. I'm 29 years old. Um, about eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4-C5. So I'm a complete, um, quadriplegic, uh, so I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I have no sensation or movement uh, below my level of injury, so below my shoulders. Yeah, that, that about covers it, right? Do I need to do some of your dogs here? Let me put yeah, some absolutely. Cameras so you guys can... oh. You got dogs all over the place. Yeah, that's Montana. The one walking by is Grace. Gracie! <laughs> Gracie, come here. Hi, Grace. How's it going, Gracie? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is what people did. <laughs> yeah, they just here for the dogs. All right, yeah, so um, while he's been introducing himself, um, let me just flip the camera around so you can see what uh, Nolan's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah, so um, I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? And that was also done with your brain. Yep, it's, <laughs> it's all brain power up there. <laughs> can you explain a little bit just to people who maybe? don't have any context on this field or what's going on here. Yeah. How are you able to actually move the cursor? Yeah, so we started out with a few, trying out a few different things. Um, we basically went from what we call kind of differentiating, like imagine movement versus um, attempted movement. So a lot of what we started out with was attempting to move. So I would attempt to move, say, my right hand, left, right, forward, back to move. And um, from there, I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a <laughs> cursor and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to, um, which was such a wild experience. This guy wants to know if happened. you feel like a wizard. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's it's. It's crazy. It really is. Um, it's so cool. I'm so freaking lucky to be a part of this and stuff. I mean, I just, every day it seems like we're learning new stuff and uh, I just can't even describe how, how cool it is to be able to do this. Do you want to um, briefly talk about a little bit, um, I, I guess, what have you been using this for outside of these sort of research sessions or when you're just playing chess? What are some other things you've been getting value from this from? Yeah, so um, one of the first times y'all gave me complete control over this, I actually stayed up until, geez, I don't know, like 6 a.m. playing <laughs> Civilization VI. Um, it, was, it was worth it, I guess is the best way to put it. It was awesome. I, I had basically given up on playing that game just because of how, mm, I mean, it's a big game and the amount of time that it takes to sit in on it is, it's just a lot. And I have to worry about a lot of things, getting pressure sores and things like that. So I just wasn't really able to play it as much as I wanted to. And y'all gave me the ability to do that again. And I played it for, geez, like eight hours that day. Um, <laughs> so I do that. I it was like what, sometimes. 6 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Yeah, or something. It was, like, <laughs> it was a lot. I'm giving you all my bad habits, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, 
yeah, it was awesome. So I did that. I read. I like learning languages. I'm learning like Japanese right now. I'm learning a bit of French. Um, Maybe for for the audience who isn't super familiar with um, mm-hmm. assistive technology, why couldn't you play Civ before? What was tricky about that, or what, what was about the Neuralink that made that possible for you? Yeah. So one of the big things, honestly, was that um, the was oh I think I just got checkmated. Um, um, the only way I could play it was through a uh, pad, and that didn't allow me to play online at all, so that kind of sucked to begin with. Um, but uh, I... Hmm. Would you play that, like, at 2 a.m. before? Or what was the Oh, no, there, there was no way. There was no way for me to do that. Um, because when I'm sitting up playing on, say, like, my iPad or something, I need complete help from, say, my, like, parents or something to do it. Um, and... Uh, I just didn't have that capability um, to like keep them up all night. Uh, that's just not something I would ever want to do. So basically, I would have to go down and everyone went to bed in my house, my brother, my parents, something like that. And then on top of that, um, I can only play for a few hours at a time because, you know, I have to worry about pressure sores and stuff. I have to be readjusted. I have to do weight shifts, things like that. Just things that come in, that things that come with being a quadriplegic and stuff. So. Um, it just wasn't really feasible for me to like say play a full game or anything, and now I can literally just lie <laughs> in bed and play to my heart's content. Honestly, the biggest restriction at this point was like having to wait for the like well wait for the implant to charge once I used all of it. <laughs> so play for eight hours, have to get off and let it charge <laughs> for a while, and then hopefully be able to play some more. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been so cool. And I'm kicking ass, too. So In this chess nice. game, too. It's yeah, close. well, I don't know if I'm going to win this chess game, but we'll see. <laughs> um, and then maybe just one final question. Your mom was showing me a bunch of, um, of pictures of you in different Halloween costumes over the years. It's something that yeah. you go nuts on. So now that you have, like, actual, you know, force control over stuff, I, I guess that opens up the possibility space there a bit. What are you thinking to dress up as this year? Mm. I mean, something my friends and I have been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I think I'm going to be Professor X. I think that's pretty, pretty fitting. Um, not only because he's in a wheelchair, and I think that just obviously fits perfectly, but now I'm actually a telekinetic, basically. Um, yeah, and so it's it's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. My friends and I are really excited You're gonna about it. You're going to freak people out when you chase trick or treat. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Um, okay, I think that's uh, that's it for today. Anything else yeah. you wanted to add before uh, signing off? Mm. We got more work to do. A lot to learn about the brain here. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. I would say that they, we have run into some issues. I don't want people to think that it is like this is the end of the journey. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, but it has already changed my life. And I think that people who are thinking about saying applying for the human trials or are thinking about, you know, finding some way to um, help out with this, um, to, you know, do your part. And that's the reason I got into it was because I just wanted to help. Um, I wanted to be a part of something that I feel like is going to change the world. Um, I think, like, there's nothing to be afraid of with that. The surgery was super easy. I literally was released from the hospital a day later. Um, I have no like cognitive impairments. Um, well, I guess none that were caused by the surgery. Um, <laughs> I beat you in chess like once. So, you know. yeah, yeah, I, I have, I do have a pretty good record in yeah. chess right now. Um, as far as just like, yeah, but, um, yeah, I just think that it's really awesome. And I want to thank Neuralink, um, for doing this, for working hard every day to make this you know, a uh, reality. I think that they are going to change the world, be a part of it. Um, so thanks guys. And I'm looking forward to releasing some of this. On. Yeah. So I guess we're going to end here, but, um, yeah, we're going to plan to release more in the coming days. So if you want to stay uh, in touch with what's going on here and hear more from, uh, from Nolan and his work, just yeah, follow along here on Twitter. Thank you everyone. Yeah. See y'all later. Bye. So what do you all think about Neuralink? Do you think this is going to be the start of a technologically abundant age where certain health issues and certain disabilities are no more than a simple
common cold, as in they're going to be as easily treatable as a common cold. And that would usher in a new golden age for health, life and longevity, leaving many people just to focus on creating and of course working in their futures. Now, I think this is one of the most important things to be working on because I think certain things that have previously been roadblocks for the medical field now being opened up especially with new innovative technology and different techniques show us that the future really is very unpredictable and we really don't know what we're going to be in the 10 to 15 year range so i want to see what you guys think about this i think this is a monumental achievement i also said like i said before i think this is truly a landmark achievement that shouldn't be underestimated at all because if we've seen anything in the last year the last two to three years especially with ai with biotech with the research that's going on into longevity research i do think think that the next 10 to 20 years are going to be extraordinarily fascinating especially considering all of the predictions around the year 2030 slash 2029 so with that being said let me know what you thought about this video i thought that this was just absolutely incredible elon musk's team has done something amazing here and i can't wait for widespread rollout of this and of course i'm hoping that there are no issues with this at all because those who actually do need this kind of technology i'm sure they're going to appreciate it a lot